So, we had an event in Angel Share, and somehow everyone's favorite bard didn't make a guest appearance. Zhongli did, for some reason, but not Venti! Plus, we just saw him in the new trailer for the next patch, and the poor boy looked so sad. So, I've decided it's time to give the Animal Archon the love he deserves. As anyone who's played through his story quest knows, Venti started as a little animal spirit who befriended one of the young men who started up the revolution in Mondstadt, the aim to bring down the god of storms, Dechabirion. See, at the time, the god of the storm used his power to create a wall of wind around what is now known as Storm Terror's lair, as Andreas, the little wolf guy hanging out in Wolfdom, had to declare war against him. This rebellion went well in that they won, but his friend died. It was at this time that Detventi was given the title of Animo Archon and became the god presiding over Mondstadt. With Dechibirian gone and Andreas deciding to step out of the competition because he realized that A, his power over winter storms really only causes death, and B, that he didn't really care about humanity to rule over them, there was no one else to take up the mantle. So the position fell onto Barbados. And this is where the story ends. Barbados takes the form of the young man he befriended to honor his memory. He took up his lyre, Der Fuling, and he set the people free. Now we get to the more complicated stuff. The stuff that isn't outright written, but is heavily implied. See, while there is the view of Barbados presented to the people of Mondstadt by the church, and the view of Barbados from the eyes as the people who know him as Venti, I don't really think either view fully encapsulates who he is. The way that the church tries to present Barbados is clearly meant to idolize him, as does all of the citizens of Mondstadt. In Rosari's introduction, it notes that despite being a member of the church, her reverence of the god is lesser than that of an average citizen of Mondstadt, proving just how devoted the people of Mondstadt are to him. However, this view of Venti doesn't seem to be one of an all-knowing deity. While the church may hold prayer meetings and even require nuns to hand in theological essays, the people of Mondstadt seem to hold Barbados as more of a symbol. As Azura, my in-house Venti authority, pointed out, Jean knows who Barbados really is. When she uses her elemental burst and says, Barbados, guide us, She's not actually asking for Venti to come down on his wind pedestal and say, Hey, Jean, I think you should swirl. She's calling on his ideals that he represents. The hymns that they sing and the ideas of the soul returning on the wind are merely meant to remind the people of Mondstadt of their ideals and provide them peace. There's probably also a hint of, we have to remember this because it's our history, especially given that Barbara's job as the deaconess is to protect the artifacts from the time. This connection to history would also explain why people got so mad at Venti for singing songs about Barbados doing ridiculous things like stealing the Saritza's staff and replacing it with a hilly trillion one. They want to preserve their history and ideals rather than having someone mocking it. But Venti, on the other hand, seems to want something different. See, just, just to be clear, Venti didn't steal the Saritza staff. In the exact same character note that presents him singing that song, it admits that only Venti can really say that it didn't happen. It admits it was something he made up. And there seems to be a lot of these wild stories out there. Or, at the very least, his fellow Archons have this perception of him being this goofy guy who doesn't have a care in the world. Both I and Zhang Li have rather negative comments about him. Both point out his drinking and pass him off as a disgrace to the arts or someone that they knew they wouldn't get along with from the moment they met him. And why wouldn't they see Venti in this light? After all, Venti is known for his fondness of alcohol and even attempted to master Zhang Li's signature to pull pranks on him. Clearly, he's nothing more than a silly guy, right? Well, here's the thing. When you look at the character note that presents the fact that Venti can forge Zhang Li's signature, there's a hint that he didn't just do this as a prank. See, the note centers around the time that the aristocracy was running around Mondstadt, the same one that Vanessa helped overthrow. Venti uses his skill to present a fake contract with Rex Lapis and the aristocrats to make the guards think that they would be sold off as slaves soon. 
turning the only weapon that the aristocrats really had against them. At the end of the note, the pranks on Zhang Li is explained before it ends with a final sentence saying, what a happy coincidence. And now here's, here's the thing, when you place that one sentence on its own at the very end of a note, it reads as really suspicious. Especially because it's the last character note that we're given. It's as if the final note is trying to cryptically tell us something about Venti's true nature. As if Venti had actually been practicing those forgeries to turn the soldiers all along, or something similar. And this idea of Venti being more than just some lazy drunk does make a lot of sense. When we first meet Venti, he is working on a way to try to help Devalin by forming a connection with him despite the corruption and manipulation from the Abyss Order. Well, we don't know how long Devalin had been awake to the point in which we met him. It's clear that Venti was pretty much immediately working on the matter, trying to find some way to calm his old friend down. It's also made immediately clear that despite quote-unquote leaving Mondstadt after everything that happened with Vanessa, he never really left. Jean and Deluc, two different protectors of the city, both were able to figure out his true identity pretty quickly when we meet them, suggesting that they had at least seen him running around prior to the start of the game and noticed him uh, kind of dipping his hands into everything and making sure everything's okay. Plus, as soon as Devalin attacks Mondstadt at the start of the game, Benny is right there to help everybody, even the person who just screwed over his last attempt to stop these attacks. So why is he running around as Venti instead of Barbados? Well, by presenting himself as just another person in Mondstadt, Venti is able to get an idea as to what exactly is going on in his city. He's able to understand what's on the surface, what people's wishes are, and what's happening in the city's underbelly. In a sense, it's the exact same thing that Zhang Li and I have just learned. So why would Venti put on this farce in front of the Archons? He's clearly quick-witted, as seen by his character quest when he helps both Jack and fake Stanley by telling them exactly what they needed to hear, and he's pretty smart. If he weren't, he wouldn't have been able to come up with the plot against the aristocrats. So why does he want this view of himself? Well, I, I think there are a couple of reasons. One, I don't think he wants to get full of himself. Part of Deck Rabin's downfall came from him thinking that he knew what was best for his people. He thought that they loved him, but he was blinded by his own self-importance. He was too distanced from his people to realize that he was hurting them. And I think Venti is desperate to ensure that he doesn't fall into the same trap. And for the second reason, well, let's be honest, this, this boy has got trauma. Every time the Traveler gets a moment alone with Venti, he drops the goofy persona and allows them to get a glimpse at the person underneath. He tells us a bit about what he wants Mondstadt to be like, as well as giving us a glimpse into what happened to him. What happened to his bard friend clearly weighs on him to this day, and you can't really blame him. I mean, how many wars has this poor boy been through? How many of his friends has he lost? If he faced that every single day, it wouldn't be easy. In a way, this lie is also used to distance himself from what he's seen. And finally, three. I think he wants his opponents to see him as a non-threat. By seeming like a goofy boy, he's able to slip around and pull the strings that he needs to get what he wants. I mean, we see that very clearly in the webtoons. After all, by letting the people of Mondstadt live with freedom rather than controlling them, he is the weakest of the seven. See, by not quote-unquote ruling over them with an iron fist, his gnosis, which is connected to Celestia, does not get as much power because Celestia obviously wants to control the people and da 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 Celestia's evil, blah blah blah. Anyway, the point is that Venti needs to be a little bit smarter about how he does things, which includes controlling his image. So what can we take away from all of this? Who is Venti? Well, in a way, I think he's a bit of all of it. The church may present an ideal version of him, but it's clear that with the history of Barbados and Mondstadt, and all of his actions, he is this strong figure that just wants to protect the city that he was a part of for so long. But we can't just say that this carefree love of music boy isn't real, because he's emulating it to remember his old friend. He truly loves these things because that's what his friend loved. Ultimately, Venti is one of the most complex characters, arguably the best Archon, and I think he is one of the best representations of what I believe the overarching theme of Genshin Impact is going to be. The idea of 
being the survivor of a trauma, facing the consequences of war, and trying to live on after it to put the pieces back together. And, well, that's that, I guess. That's how I view Venti the Bard. Yeah, I, I really, I just want to give the boy a blanket and some tea and a hug. <laughs> um, so thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this has either made you rethink your views of Venti, or if you already had a similar idea about the boy, you're sitting there like, yeah, Venti's awesome. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna end this now. Thanks for watching. Bye!